And joining us now is Michael McFall, former U.S. ambassador to Russia and a close friend of the Navalny's. Ambassador, our condolences. I'm sure it's a hard day for you personally. What's your reaction to the big crowds who we see turned out today despite the risk? Extraordinary. Uh, I have a lot of respect for those Muscovites that came out to honor Alexei Navalny. I think it's important to, for everybody to know that the, Putin's government tried really hard to not allow this to happen. And Yulia Navalny and her team defied them and said, we are going to have this event and we are going to defy you. So that shows you that they are still fighting. And second, just as Kira reported, everybody who's there is being uh, photographed. They can expect, they can be threatened with years of going to jail for being on TV with us right now. Uh, that is incredible bravery. And for every one of them that is that brave, there's another dozen uh, people in Russia, in Moscow, who are not as courageous, but have exactly the same preferences. There were so many obstacles, as you point out, getting to this day. Navalny's allies, allies say they even struggled to see a venue and to find a hearse willing to carry his body. How big of a threat did Navalny pose to Vladimir Putin? First, I just want to underscore how horrendous it was. Uh, they were negotiating with his mother, Ludmila. They were threatening to bury him up in Siberia, right up in the North Pole, if they didn't agree to have a private burial. And she bravely took on Putin's regime to say, no, we're going to bury him in Moscow. And no, I'm not going to accept the conditions of a secret burial. Uh, just to give a testimony to Ludmila and her family that even in these horrible, horrific moments of their lives, they are still defying Putin. And they're doing it because uh, Alexei Navalny was the greatest threat to Vladimir Putin. In a free and fair election, uh, he would have defeated Vladimir Putin back you know, 20 years ago when people were uh, completely brainwashed by two decades of propaganda. And to this day, I think Putin uh, decided he had to kill him because he still feared Navalny. Mm. I mean, think about it. Why would he need to do this if he didn't fear what Navalny and his ideas represented that threatened Putin's uh, autocratic regime? Navalny's wife, Yulia, wasn't there in person today for the funeral because of the danger to her. Uh, we heard her speak to the European Parliament this week. How's she doing? Well, obviously, these are really tough times. She was out here in Palo Alto, uh, here at Stanford, where I live, to, to be with her daughter, Dasha, who's a student here. Um, I would just say she understands that she is now the face of the Russian opposition. She's the leader of the Russian opposition. She never wanted to ha play this role, uh, despite the, the horrific Putin propaganda about her right now. This is not a role she wanted to play. Uh, but now she thinks it, 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 she has to, to honor, uh, you know, her deceased husband. And I, I've known Yulia for a long time. She is principled. She is strong. Uh, she is charismatic. Uh, she has many of the traits that Alexei had. I actually believe she will be a very strong leader of the Russian opposition in years and decades to come. And it may take decades, hmm. but she is willing to fight for decades uh, until uh, the, the death, the murder of her husband is avenged and Russia is free. And, and as we mentioned, officials there in Russia say Navalny died of natural causes. Do you think we'll ever know the truth? Just everybody needs to remind themselves, Putin's regime lies every single day. Uh, and to report those lies as if it's reporting, you have to question what they say every single day. That's the first thing. Second, uh, Putin killed Navalny. That's a fact. What, how he died is, is in some ways immaterial. He was the one that poisoned him. He then came back. He was the one that arrested him. When they arrested him, Navalny was a very strong person, both physically and psychologically and emotionally. He was still writing letters to me when he was in jail. So that he died in prison, that is, Putin is responsible for that. Will we know the actual facts? My guess is no, because this is Putin's Russia and those facts are too damaging to him.